Hi everyone. Um, this is the low the uh, programming class. Essentially, um, we covered several topics uh, until now. Um, we first started with the Unix system. Talked about the in and ins and outs of uh, Unix. Uh, went through the the Unix networking. Then we looked at uh, Perl programming in detail. We went through all the aspects of Perl. Um, how the various um, um, variable specification, what types of variables that uh, Perl have. Then we went through like the data structure essentially, and then we also looked at the control structure. And then now um, we got proficient enough uh, in Perl. Then we started looking at uh, Tickle, um, Tickle and TK. Uh, initially, we started with Tickle again. We went through the same exercise of uh, the data structure, uh, control structures, how to manipulate uh, Tickle, um, and uh, some of the variable substitution and uh, um, uh, the um, uh, variable substitution with uh, the dollar. And um, we also had like uh, some. Um, um, uh, functional uh, function substitutions basically that uh, we looked at um, how to run function within function using the square brackets um, and um, um, finally we also looked at the TK essentially and then we looked at uh, how the TK you can write widgets basically and then you can uh, code all these graphical information what kind of graphical structures are supported uh, by um, uh, TK. Uh, and then we also looked at some of the advanced concepts in uh, Tickle. Uh, and then finally, in the last uh, few lectures, we also covered um, some of the uniqueness with uh, the synopsis uh, Tickle, uh, mainly the um, um, the collections as one of the data types or data objects, uh, and how to manipulate with the collections. Um, I hope like you remember all those things like the get cells um, get commands essentially um, so um, I think like today we are going to switch gears again and then uh, move to the next uh, topic which is the Python programming. So I will be talking about uh, Python um, and then um, also um, we will be finishing up with uh, this Python programming as the main uh, lecture. Um, So let us begin in earnest with the Python programming. So what we will be talking about we have about 13 chapters that we will be going through first we look look at some very basic stuff as to how to interact with Python how to do some simple commands things like that. Um, then we will go more uh, into details the conditionals um, then uh, we will look at the functions um, the Python functions uh, then we will go through the, the iteration or uh, the while loops and the for each loops and how to specify those things in Python then we will look at strings the collection data type which is uh, which we introduced in the tickle programming but we will be looking into that. Uh, then we will go through some advanced uh, functions, um, exception handling. Uh, then we will cover the Python module. So one thing is like why is this important? We will come to know in a short while, uh, and then uh, we will talk in more details uh, later on. Then we will look at some of the Python files, the documentation, uh, classes. Again, this is another key uh, topic. Why do we do this? And then the CGI programming basically. So um, these are the main topics that we will be covering in uh, this uh, um, section of the of our class. So um, without too much, um, uh, so before we talk about all these things, I want to make sure that uh, the Python language is similar to Perl, C, and Java. Um, but it's only similar. There are some definite differences between these languages also. So initially, I want to just um, give you some brief overview of what Python is, and then we will go into more details. Um, before that, 
some of the resources that uh, you can uh, look forward to. Um, so again, there is Learning Python by Mark Lutz and uh, David Asher. This is one of the books. Dive into Python, Mark Pilgrim. Um, how to think like a computer scientist? Learning with Python is another one. Um, this is by Jeffrey Elkner, uh, Downey, and Chris um, Myers. And then um, the py programming in Python 3 is uh, an introduction to Python language. Again, we will be talking about this uh, number three, and then there will be also number two. So, what is the what is the significance of that? We will talk about that. Um, and then finally, like I mean, this is a, a kind of a good reference, uh, basically that you you can always go back to, which is the Python.org. Um, this provides you with um, if you are in doubt, you can quickly go to this uh, website and check um, the answer for your particular problems. So the first question we ask is now we learned about Perl, we learned about Tickle, uh, why Python? So Python is a high level language and uh, you can do a lot with relatively little code, uh, Perl you can see that basically like it can get cumbersome, Tickle as you know like I mean it was developed as um, um, a quick scripting language but even in Tickle uh, programming in Tickle becomes uh, quite cumbersome when it comes to complex systems. Um, so why Python? It is also supposed to be easier to learn than the main competitor Perl. So it kind of replaces Perl uh, with the more definite concepts uh, I will explain to you the, those things uh, and uh, Python uh, nowadays is fairly popular among high level languages in fact um, some of the companies are built on Python for example Google, um, in Google people use Python more quite frequently and basically like that is their main programming language. Uh, and it has a robust uh, support for uh, scripts um, and um, also it, it, is a, it has a robust support for um, object oriented programming. So this is where like when we talk about classes and various things we will talk about that uh, in the coming lectures. And then it also supports uh, integration with other programming language. So um, basically like if you have Perl and things like that uh, different modules you can easily call from a Python uh, language uh, into those uh, uh, those uh, modules okay so now we will be going into like uh, the very basic stuff the very basic stuff involves running some few uh, Python programs then we will go into the variables how to print uh, so the printing itself and then some operators um, Input how do we input um, objects into a Python program and how do we call comments and then scope uh, the scope of the variables uh, to how to how they extend uh, and even like scope of um, the program itself so we will take uh, one by one um, so the Python programs basically like I mean you can run Python programs from files just like Perl or shell scripts by typing Python followed by the program name dot pi. This pi is basically the uh, extension that we will be using I mean and in fact uh, this is the sure giveaway that it is a, a Python program. Um, the file can just it contains just the, the Python commands essentially. You can also like invoke the program directly by typing the name of the file just program.py. If it has the first line the pointer to the, the Python installation so here the installation is user bin Python so if you do like a hash bang user bin Python and as the first line in your script and then you followed by the Python command then you can just simply type that particular file name and uh, it will execute of course you need to set the execution uh, permissions once you do that um, it will just execute 
So this is just like a shell script. It uh, works as long as the file has uh, is this permission, as I mentioned. And then um, finally, like I mean, you can also enter a Python shell, and then the Python commands you can run Python commands uh, interactively by typing Python. So these are all like valid um, um, ways to do it. Um, so now um, so now let's see um, well how to do an hello world program. So here is uh, what basically like I mean uh, with every programming language we have this hello world script. So here, uh, the example is uh, shown here. We use the user bin Python, and then just simply say print in quotes "hello world." Again, um, if you save this uh, file into hello.py, then you can execute uh, the permission um, on this file. Basically, like just do a change mode um, u plus x hello pi in the Unix window and then you can just run it as uh, hello.py when you run this program the output is here basically just prints this uh, shape in the hello world so this is simple enough I think uh, I think you, you should be like now very familiar you should be confident to write for, uh, Python programs so now let us look at uh, some more on the printing so here we say print hello and then we specify a comma and then x x star star 2 x star star 3 so what this means is essentially it is going to print this um, uh, string called hello followed by whatever the value of x then um, the x power 2 which is uh, x squared and then it prints x, x cubed. So here x is uh, four, so it printed four, sixteen, and sixty-four. And then whenever we specify backslash t, that is a tab character. So then it actually like moves it by a tab amount, and then prints the next one. So if you say print two times two is equal to, and then within port, so this is not evaluated as a string. And then here we just evaluate uh, to power two um, arithmetically. So the printing you can see now that you can mix and match things. Basically, you can mix variables with uh, expressions with um, um, different types of variables. So this is all like the flexibility that uh, Python offers. And uh, if you end a print statement with a comma. That suppresses the new line so that the next print statement starts at the same line. You can also print to an open file, um, and basically, like it is just like this: you go out, then I mean print, and then double arrow, say out file, and then the message. So the message will be printed there. So now let's look at some more. Um, uh, fun stuff. So here we have another example, the basics of uh, Pi. Um, so we specify the um, the header. Actually, like this should be Python. User bin Python. Then we say print one plus three. Then we say something like pi is three point one four one five nine two six. And we just say print pi. We can also make a, like a message, and the message is a string, hello world, and then we can put print message. So now the output of this particular run is going to be the first one is it is going to evaluate this expression and print the result which is 4 for the second one there is a print statement here 
this print pi and then it only going to replace this pi with the actual value. So this is the variable and then it replaces the variable with the value. And then finally the last one the print message is again the message will be replaced um, with its own value which is a string variable. So you look at this basically uh, you have a variable name which you never declared what type of variable it is and then um, you also like a, can um, um, print uh, those things fairly easily. So summarizing the previous example as you see like I mean the pi and messages message are variables but one is actually a floating point number the other one is a string and notice that we never declared these uh, types in our example and python itself decided what types of these variables. So in python actually the variables concept of variables are just um, it is just an object reference it, um, you know, this is also like we saw some of these uh, kind of concepts in tickle as well. Um, when we talk about like these associative arrays and things like that, where um, index and value are, or, or the index is basically it's just a placeholder, basically it's just an object reference. Um, the reason we don't declare the types are because the reference might point to different type later on. So here is one example. X is forty-two. Y is hello. So print x y prints forty two hello uh, print x comma y um, but you can also change this type into like I mean um, actually like there's there's a statement another statement missing which is um, y equal to x and then when you do print x y now it actually prints forty two and forty two um, because now it actually like now changed the the data type from the string back to this um, integer. So you can actually like in midway you can change uh, the type of the the particular variable. So again, this is another key uh, concept with uh, Python. So. One thing that you can do is you can have a so here is there is a function call we haven't introduced the function but let's say like I mean there is a function called type that determines what kind of type it is. So here we define pi as 3.141.926. The message is defined as hello world, and then i is an expression two plus two. Now if you ask Python to print the type of pi type of message and type of i you get this outputs basically this is the first one is a floating point number the second one is a string and then the third one is an integer. So it does recognize all the types only thing is um, it is um, intelligent enough to figure out how to apply those types and also um, when to apply what type um, so that is a very powerful concept um, so how do we define the variable names um, so the variable names um, can contain letters numbers and underscores but it has to begin with a letter and that's how um, Python identifies um, um, a variable name, and it cannot be one of the reserved Python keywords. Uh, here are some of the examples: and, as, assert, break, class, continue, def, bl, elif, else, except, exec. Finally, for from global if import in 
is lambda not or pass print raise return try while with and in um, actually like I mean if you go to uh, any of the websites that I mentioned earlier um, you should be able to find these reserved words um, the, the thing is basically you cannot use reserved words for a constant or a variable or any other identifier name. Um, the identifier name basically or a variable name it is used to identify not only just a variable this these rules apply for a function a class a module or any other object. Um, and uh, the other thing is it, it, it uh, Python also does not allow the punctuation characters such as the at symbol dollar. Uh, or percentage within any identifiers. Um, Python is a case sensitive programming language, so that uh, the uppercase and the lowercase are two different variables or two different identifiers. So now let us look at uh, some more. Um, so any names starting with one underscore or basically an underscore followed by um, um, like a letter um, they are not imported from the module import statement um, we will we will we'll look at this one basically like the, this one uh, later on as to how to use that. Um, and then names starting and ending with two underscores so this an underscore underscore b underscore underscore they are special basically they are system defined names the names beginning with uh, two underscores but without any trialing um, trailing underscore um, they are local to a class so when you define a class the variables within the class follow this convention which is uh, two underscores followed by a name a single underscore by itself denotes the result of a last expression so this is again useful when we talk about functions because one of the things that gets returned is underscore if you do not specify a specific return statement this is something that we saw in the tickle side basically so those are the concepts that are still continuing um, in the uh, in uh, Python. So um, the key thing is basically the variables in Python they are nothing but reserved memory locations to store values. This means that you can create a variable and you reserve some space in the memory that is all and based on the data type of the variable the interpreter allocates memory and decides what can be stored in the reserved memory. So um, you can store integers decimals or characters into these variables and um, Python variables do not have explicitly declared uh, do not have to be explicitly declared to reserve memory space so this is what we saw in the earlier ones so now um let us look at some of the operators um, so the standard operators basically that we all know of um, the plus sign for addition minus for subtraction division exponentiation we also have the stars for multiplication and then modulus basically which is a remainder after division. And then uh, we will talk about the comparison operators in chapter two. Um, 
one thing that i uh, kind of um, talked about earlier basically is um, uh, this concept of simplification basically this is a very this is kind of a it's not a purely a scripting language but kind of high level language which also enables you to program in lot of shortcuts um so one particular shortcut probably like we'll talk about this is this multiple assignment you can do something like a equal to b equal to c equal to 1 this is like a basically everything is assigned to 1 you can also say a comma b comma c equal to 1 2 3 so everything is assigned once basically a is assigned 1 b is assigned 2 and c is assigned 3 So we will talk about some of these things also in the coming um, slides. So here is another example. Um, this is known as the operators um, Python. So you know what uh, two times two is. So means four. Now if you do a two star star three, which is exponentiation, the result is eight. And if you do a 10 modulo 3 the answer is 1. Now if you print 1.0 divided by 2.0 this is something that we saw in the in the tickle this is a floating point so the result is 0.5 but if you do 1 divided by 2 that is still treated as integers so the result is 0. So this is exactly the same that uh, we saw in uh, tickle as well. So in that sense, basically, like it behaves like tickle. Now um, Python has actually um, incorporated operators like plus equal to, which is like a plus equal to b is same as a equal to a plus b. So it is like a self addition but the plus plus the increment or decrement operations they do not work in the Python. So now let us look at some of the type conversions essentially uh, any int float string boolean or converted to integer floating point uh, string or boolean um, the boolean is essentially will have just true or false uh, respectively. So here is a type conversion um, routine if you do a print 1.0 by 2.0 the output is 0.5 print 1 divided by 2 they are integers so output is 0 you can also may specifically mention it is float 1 divided by float 2 and the result is um, 0.5 and now you can convert this floating point into integers by simply operating it on as an integer and then the result is just 3 and if you do a string the result is exactly the same because in string actually they do not have any meaning basically it just reports a string. Now the bool function basically of 1 is true and then bool function of 0 is false. Now some of the things that we saw in tickle and that is still applicable in Perl for example this string multiply basically so if you have a string operator times 3 is basically the same to those things times 3 and then you can also use a plus operator or an addition operator on a string and it just prints out together. So before we go into the next one I want to also talk about a couple of other things um, 
one is um, the numbers in Python. Um, the the data type is um, immutable. Uh, this is a new term. So immutable data type. What this means is the changing the value of a number data type results in a newly allocated object. So if you change the value of a number data type. Results in a newly elected object. So numbers are immutable data type. A number object is created when you are assigning a value to any of the object, and the Python supports four different uh, numerical types. We saw one of them in the previous one, which is the int, and it also supports long. They are called the long integers, essentially, and like usually it's represented in octal or hexadecimal. Then float, which we saw in the previous example. And then finally, complex. And then the complex is basically for complex numbers. Now let us look at um, how do we gather input from the keyboard. So for this we use this um, particular function raw input um, or we can also use just input. So let us see like how we can make this of this. So I equal to raw input enter the math expression. So and then we print i essentially. So it says basically like enter the math expression, and then we say like three plus two. Now the i's value is the same three plus two. It doesn't do anything basically. It just copies into the i. Now we say like j equal to input enter the same expression. Now if you enter the three plus two, it is evaluated, and then the result is shown as uh, the value of j. So we have like two um, ways of uh, inputting um, a value or, or a data from the keyboard. One is the raw input, and then the other one is input. So the raw input just copies whatever you type exactly as is into the um, take it, takes it into the program. Whereas um, if you do a just an input basically it evaluates the expression first and then puts the result into the variable. Now how do we comment uh, use the comment in uh, uh, Python it is very simple sim similar basically the hash sign is used as a comment and uh, anything in a line after this uh, hash symbol is treated as a comment so you can put anywhere uh, the comment anywhere and it will just be treated as uh, the comment from that point onwards in that line this is just like the Perl so even in Perl we do it exactly the same. Okay, 
so um, so far what we have done is um, we just introduced uh, the python um, so we started with um, actually what why python um, this i think uh, hope, um, you had um, um, understood that concept uh, basically um, uh, we talked about um, basic stuff which is um, how do we invoke a python uh, first of all we talked about the high level language how um, how we can write code um, or relatively less code and uh, how we can write the code that are easier than Perl and uh, also like I mean how uh, uh, it is popular basically uh, python is being used in uh, several companies um, as their main programming uh, environment. Uh, it also supports object orientedness uh, which we will talk about in uh, towards the end of uh, python um, but I want to introduce you to the, um, the object oriented programming concepts um, and then finally like it uh, also allows uh, integration with uh, other languages. Now we also like talked about some other things we wanted to see how to run Python programs what are variables uh, how do we print those things and then um, some of the operators and uh, the various um, um, input uh, to the Uh, how do we input into the program into the Python and then uh, the comments? Uh, we haven't talked much about the scope. Um, we will see like uh, maybe we can talk about that uh, now. So uh, for invoking the program, the Python program, uh, essentially you can just type Python followed by Python program, or the other method is basically like you put the path to the Python, then we can invoke it from there. Or the third method is basically like you can just uh, invoke a Python shell and run the Python commands interactively by just typing Python followed by the command. So, simple example hello world, we saw this basically like just say print and then it will print. Um, some of the other ones basically, if you want to um, print like the um, um, value of x. X squared and X cube. It's very easy, basically. You need to print uh, hello and then followed by this. Then it, it just prints exactly the same. Um, you can also print like the strings. This is the whole thing. It's a string followed by a tab and then um, the the actual expression. So the expression expression will be evaluated and the value will be shown. And we can also print um, the result or some any kind of message into a file by just um, using the double arrow and then the out file. So we saw some of the um, variable types. Um, essentially, like I mean, can be uh, floating point, the string, or um, um, or an integer and I also mentioned that um, you can have like multiple assignments and then the variable type can actually change as I mentioned here where uh, initially it was a string type and then we changed it into a integer type by just doing an assignment um, and then also mention that uh, these variables are immutable immutable types um, so and you know the definition of immutable and then the type basically type um, is a function that displays the type of the variable 
so we can just say type i type message type i and then it prints out each for each of them what is the data type that is used. And then we saw the rules con rules for the variable names essentially you know, it should contain um, letter numbers and it can contain letters numbers and underscores but it needs to begin with a uh, uh, letter and it cannot be any one of the reserved words uh, in python um, so those are the things that uh, you need to watch out for Um, one thing that uh, is basically like it's another uh, key element in uh, Python that we didn't talk about is um, the indentation. Um, so the the lines and indentation are very crucial in uh, Python. Indentation. So if you say like I mean if something true. And print, then we say else, then another print. So it knows that different levels of hierarchy through this um, the the um, indentation. So it is very very important to indentate um, your lines so that uh, it doesn't give you. We also saw like um, how to uh, some more um, rules for the variable names. Um, so single underscore essentially like I mean this is um, this is to show that uh, they're not imported from the module import statement. And then the the name is starting with double underscore. That's uh, Special or a system defined name, and if the name begin with this double underscore um, followed by the variable name uh, without the trailing uh, underscores, then it is a local to a class. Basically. So it's uh, within the class any variables that are specified are specified like this. And then finally, a single underscore itself uh, denotes the result of the last expression. So uh, as I mentioned, you can use it. For uh, functions to return values. Now we looked at operators, uh, some of the operators essentially, which is uh, uh, plus, minus, uh, division, differentiation, modulus, uh, and then. Uh, so the, the comparison operators we will introduce in the next lecture. So here is just an example of all the operators essentially and we can go through it uh, at your leisure um, you can see like how they get translated and what is the output for. Um, each of these uh, expressions. The key difference is here basically like you know, how do we do the floating point division versus the normal division and um, if you use this thing basically uh, again you want to make sure that your answer is correct. Um, and then um, it has this plus equal to um, um, operator which is combining the assignment and then the addition operator but it does not have an increment or a decrement uh, type of operator operation. On the string data type uh, the python can accept a single quote or a double quote or even a triple quote and follow put uh, on a quadruple quote um, to denote uh, strings 
string literals as long as the same type of code starts and ends the string. The triple code is usually um, used for strings that go across multiple lines. So um, if you want to span across the string across multiple lines, then you can use the triple uh, quotes. And a single quote essentially um, is also um, legal syntax. And then um, we looked at uh, how do we do an operations on strings like uh, this um, e times three becomes an e, e or um, hello plus world becomes hello world. And if you want to input from a keyboard, um, the raw input uh, basically uh, and the input are the two functions available. Um, so the raw input actually um, gets whatever is there as is, and then whereas the math expression will um, try to evaluate an expression, um, and that's what uh, gives uh, in the input uh, uh, value. So if you use input, then this mathematical expression is evaluated. If you use raw input, then it is not evaluated. Then we looked at the comments. Um, we know that anything after the hash symbol is uh, treated as a comment. It's just like Perl. Um, So I think uh, we will um, actually uh, I think like we covered most of the, the things that we said we will be covering um, except the scope of the, the variables. We will talk about the scope in the, the next lecture of uh, the extent to which the, the, the variable names can be uh, can be available so that is something that we will talk about it in the next lecture okay thank you very much.